Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour as we always come to you here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got uh, one for the record books uh, out here. And, of course, uh, uh, we started off very tame uh, on the downside this morning. You know, we're mostly around uh, 75, 70 points lower on the S&P cash. Uh, we did end up going to a much different uh, regime about uh, 10, 10, 15. And I think a lot of people started looking at uh, some of these stocks that were up instead of down, uh, especially Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's uh, see if we can't get a, a uh, chart up on that one. Uh, to TSM. I think that was the big one that kind of uh, confused a lot of folks because they were very positive on the call that I listened to. That actually came out. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, I just happened to be up and uh, listen to their earnings call. I thought, wow, this is pretty good. See, it was, it was down three or four bucks. Um, interesting. Um, and I thought, well, maybe there was something I missed. But uh, we got a big move. In fact, uh, the high of the day uh, ran a lot of short positions uh, out of the market. And that was... Ah, Too high of the day, seventy dollars and twenty cents. So, when the biggest and probably most important company in all of the semiconductor uh, market decides that it wants to uh, turn tail and go higher, I think you probably need to look at it. Uh, but uh, you know, they they kind of had this thing where you know some of the people are canceling orders, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think the people missed the next sentence in the earnings call where they said, you know, we have four people for every uh, we have four uh, chips that we could make for every one we can't actually make. So if someone drops out of the line, it doesn't hurt us at all. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of those iner inertial, inertial? Uh, initial positions uh, were on contracts at lower prices. We can actually make more money. Uh, if these people drop out and we get to actually go to the higher contracts for making chips for folks. So certainly a lot of volume. You had about two days going sideways. So I'm going to say today is a lot more about uh, earnings than I think that very hot number in the morning. I think we got some help out from somebody. I'm going to say that more than likely it was the Treasury and they were uh, pushing the dollar down. I may find out something else, but at the moment, that's it. Uh, as we said in the S&P cash, that 36.36 is where I'm looking. Any close above that is actually extremely bullish. Um, but uh, And of course, options really hadn't, uh, we talked about how they'd been fairly bullish uh, looking at something like uh, 378 or 380 on the spies. And they really hadn't changed much even yesterday or today. So maybe they think that earnings uh, were going to have uh, Bank of uh, what, the Bank of America? I think it's coming up. But uh, J.P. Morgan uh, and uh, Goldman Sachs uh, tomorrow. So maybe they think uh, there's a lot more in the uh, in the tank for those guys. But again, this is just the real beginning of earnings season. And what if uh, we've sold a little bit too far down and we're going to have a lot of squeezing as the short sellers may have been just a little too bearish? As I've always thought, we're probably going to get some kind of rally. Uh, the charts actually show something like 4,400 as a high end of the possibility. And then maybe after the first of the year, we'll see something else. Uh, but uh, eh, who could say? Anyway, uh, let's take a quick look at the SMHs. Uh, 
And what do you have there? I mean, if you're talking about bullish engulfings, you certainly have the last two candles on this. Uh, again, and a lot of volume. Uh, it really smacks of uh, washing people out at the lows. Uh, and you do tend to get a lot of volume. Um, and then the volume kind of dries up. We had about a, I'm going to say, about a 30%, uh, maybe 35-point bounce off the lows. Uh, around 3500 on the S&P cash. That didn't, you know, you had a lot of volume. Then you kind of bounced on no volume. And then you kind of drifted a little higher. And then we actually started getting a lot of volume back in as we went through, uh, I'm going to call it about 3580. Um, I thought that 3636 would be kind of a brick wall. Uh, it got to that and chewed through it fairly quickly. So maybe there were more people shorting uh, and then covering later. As we said uh, over the last few days, it's been very hard for me to get very bearish with uh, looking at the charts and looking at options. But at the same time, uh, you get that uh, deal where Otis the drunk can wander all over town. You know where he's going to be at midnight, and that's in bed in the jail in Mayberry. But uh, I think we got one of those uh, times where he just kind of wandered off to the edge of town and came back this morning. Can I actually put a pin in this yet? And that would be no. We do need a very good close. That uh, would be anything above 3636. Now, I would suspect that we go back and test that before the end of the day. And at that point, you're gonna have a much better indication of whether or not this is gonna be sticky, ooh, sticky, or if it's gonna be better. So, what else do we do in here? I think that's it. Uh, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, test the lows, test 3650. Uh, excuse me, 3636. That's what I'm thinking we retest uh, today. Yeah, if I didn't say that uh, more eloquently, that would be it. Okay, first question is, what do I think of the IWM? Uh, question is, is this on the, is this Santa Claus or the election? Um, markets have traditionally absolutely loved uh, divided uh, uh, executives and uh, the uh, Congress. And there's a 99% chance that uh, the Republicans uh, take over the uh, House. Um, right now, the best estimates that I follow from the, tr uh, from the people that have actually been correct for the last 20 years, the Trafalgar Group, uh, is saying 5248. So the Republicans would have both House and Senate. Um, that can still change, but at least uh, you, I think you have to say that at least the House is going to go that way, and that would uh, be enough to slow the roll, and uh, not a lot of things change before we, uh, we go. Yeah. But markets like that. They don't like a lot of movement. Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we uh, come back... Uh, check in as i said uh 3636 is the number that i've been looking at for a while we're at 3662 on the s&p cash so we'll keep a eye on that let's go through some of the earnings out here that were rather surprising uh we uh did talk about taiwan semiconductor already uh oh we talked about the iwm what was the question on that did i handle it all uh, okay. Um, on the IDBM, I don't have as good a uh, look, but I would say, uh, could you get a bounce and still be in a downtrend to 186 on the IWM? Uh, I think that could be it. Uh, I don't think that you'd want to bet anything over 187 on the IWM as just a bounce in the downtrend. I do like that you have 20% lighter volume uh, off the October 6th high at 176.17 down to this uh, low here today, which so far is just 28 million shares against a 42 million share low. So that's the first one. Anyway, uh, Delta Airlines. So they, of course, uh, sold off right after the uh, open, uh, pushed down into this gap lower. And the more that they talked and were out there this morning, the more that it sounds like uh, a lot of people uh, coming out of uh, COVID lockdown are more than willing to brave uh, the unfriendly skies. Is that the, who was the unfriendly skies? Is that American? Uh, anyway, the uh, friendly skies and uh, just go back up to where uh, last resistance is. Uh, and that was this big candle of the 4th on, uh, what is that, October? Uh, that had 16 million shares. You had 20 million shares. So you want to watch this. But anything over a close of $30.75 uh, would be bullish. And I can't imagine uh, being bearish uh, the airlines into this Christmas. 
Uh, if anything, uh, people are going to be hanging on the wings uh, like they were leaving Afghanistan, uh, trying to get a ride anywhere for Christmas, from what I can understand or hear. Uh, the big winner winner chicken dinner uh, is certainly t t t a Domino's up 10% on uh, a lot of people coming back to the Domino's death this. That's what I always called them. Uh, but, uh, eh, when I do feel like a big greasy pizza, that is where I go. Uh, you got decent volume. Uh, the last big volume day. Uh, was on the 4th of October on 1 million shares. Eh, got 2 million already. Uh, doesn't look like you're holding the highs quite yet. Anything over 336.75 tells you that we're ready for some football and a lot of pizza come this winter. Even Fastenal, uh, which opened up lower, if I'm not mistaken. These guys sell nuts and bolts. Uh, probably not a huge uh, reason to, to play this stock, uh, but I do like it as uh, something that's very akin to international paper. And that is uh, the canary in the coal mine. It did break through the previous low, did get down to the previous gap, but it blew through the July 14th low that had 5.6 million shares. It's going to close back up in there and maybe above it. Um, so generally you'd like to have lighter volume. Um, I don't think this is a rousing endorsement. Uh, but again, I think a lot of these stocks are set up for at least a small Christmas rally. And in this case, up to maybe $50 and uh, 50 cents for it, but, uh, a nice candle out there compared, uh, to the open. If you were happen to be long it. uh, Walgreens boots Alliance up 6%. Um, a lot of these charts look almost the same, and that is they've been beating out a low so far. And uh, they're back up uh, and trying to get through resistance. In this case, uh, the last big day out here was about 6.7 million shares back on September 28th. Uh, you are above that. Again, uh, what I need to know is a close. Uh, where these stocks hold above some of these key levels. Uh, but I wouldn't be short them. I think uh, you probably have about three days before we could see any of these do any significant reversals in the market. Uh, Revlon, of course, uh, kind of approached meme status, uh, slowly ground through this huge up day that was uh, a short squeeze back on August 1st. You had 56 million shares to the upside. So far today, you got about 13.7 million shares. You did go below it. You're going to close back above it, and you're probably going to close back above it with very light volume. But uh, eh, get ready for the war paint, I guess, is what that's telling us. But, uh, now, let's go ahead and start looking at uh, what's coming at us. Which is tomorrow, which is Thursday. Uh, as we said uh, in the open, I think it in the open, maybe it was in the update. We've got JP Morgan uh, with a nice reversal candle. Uh, they're out, I think, at 7 a.m. Uh, in the morning, although I don't have an exact time, but around 7 a.m. So we'll look at that, but uh, we're going to have some fairly decent volume. You're going to run all the shorts out. This probably looks like it could get to 112. I wouldn't be surprised to see that pre-market or aftermarket really scare the shorts uh, out of uh, their short positions. This has really got two things uh, that are diametrically opposed in that uh, the higher interest rates should make them a lot of money, but uh, also the downside in the market uh, may cost them some, and they still lend a great deal. Uh, being able to lend that at much higher prices may offset the losses that they have in the market, but I don't think anybody knows until we get into earnings tomorrow morning and they tell us, uh, at least uh, try to tell us, UNH, what's going on. Uh, United Health Group um, has a beautiful engulfing candle 
uh, across the last three days. Uh, volume is not all that exciting. Uh, the downside, I think, on this one uh, is that there's just not that much upside. Maybe 518 unless they blow everything away. Um, a lot of these healthcare uh, uh, companies uh, had a very good time and where a lot of the people that were more than likely uh, to uh, take a lot of their cash uh, in services uh, either expired or put off uh, any of the alternative uh, dates for uh, operations. Those are coming back, I hear, in a, uh, in a big way. This one probably just uh, fundamentally looks to be probably the weakest. 450 is the next support level. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we have a call. Uh, not exactly sure how to pronounce the name, maybe you can tell me. But he's from Puerto Rico. How you doing today? How's it going, Dave? Pretty good. Oh, they had O Hill. Doesn't sound like Bill. <laughs> Bill. Okay. I usually call in the guys usually call me Bill and I just run with it. I'm not too uh Hello? Yep, you're there. Oh thought I lost. I'm sorry. Um, wise key date, if you'd be so kind. W K E Y. Okay. Are you familiar with this company? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I jump in, jump out. You helped me with it before. Um, I trade it multiple times. I take your advice when uh, when it spikes up, uh, I sell it, and then uh, when it's down in the doldrums like now, and 
volume comes in, I take a swing. Uh, well, certainly this is a uh, cyber security company, which is probably semi-recession-proof. Uh, uh, the problem is that uh, the big companies just keep pounding on these smaller companies and making it harder and harder uh, for them to exist. I, you know how much money this company has left? I think they're down to uh, 17, either seven, 20 million, give or take a couple million. See the 17 million or 23 million as of a few weeks ago. Okay. Cash. Unusual items. Tax rate for calcs. Entrance. Uh, expense. Income. Total expenses. Need other income. Total revenue. Okay. I guess the biggest problem I see here is that uh, they really haven't done much for the last four years. They've just kind of gone sideways mm -hmm. for uh, total total revenue numbers. I got 34 okay. and then 22 and then 15 and then 22 and uh, probably 25 this year. So right. I have a feeling that this is – I kind of put these in the uh, group of also runs – and right. in a bear market, the last thing anybody wants is a company that doesn't have a lot of cash because the thought is that they could get wiped out fairly quickly, especially if cash becomes a problem. Um, this, anytime you get into a bear market, um, they don't like uh, anybody spending any cash whatsoever because the thought is that what happens if you actually need that cash? So I think I talked about it uh, yesterday or the day before with uh, uh, Kamiko buying um, Westinghouse and getting uh, a five dollar uh, haircut uh, or about twenty percent lower, and it's probably a great thing for them to do, but it's absolutely horrible uh, for a market where they don't want anybody spending any money whatsoever. And that's probably the problem I see in this. They're worried that uh, they're going to be not be in the position to be able to uh, get more cash. I'm just looking at the uh, at the sheet. So I would say bigger problems for this one Better. are are the broader economic issues right now, and that probably not a lot of people want to be around this. Do you know if they have any new products coming out or anything? You know what it is? It's um, they have the same product, but but it's like you said, they'll sign a contract, and um, you know they 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 kind of go sideways. So they've had the same contract, uh, same products rather, for about four to five years. Um, basically, semiconductors, IoT, and um, they they make uh, contracts with governments and defense departments and things of that nature. Um, so to answer your question, no, um, it's just it, everything you're saying is correct, Dave. I agree with it. It's it, you know they're just not catching steam like uh, like you've noticed because they're just basically going sideways for for four years as far as revenue growth goes. Um, I mean, I, I, I the products really interested me. Why sat? I mean, you can uh, hire them for about thirty two hundred dollars. And you can uh, do co-location on a satellite. And, of course, there's different applications for that. Um, but like you pointed out, I mean, if they're not, I mean, they should be growing revenues far, far more than they are if their products are, have a need. So maybe it's better just to stay away. I'm going to say that unless uh, we start seeing interest rates dip, it is probably one that you don't want to. I mean, can it? Can they have a big short squeeze or something like that on this? They certainly could. Do I see anything that rapidly changes their fortune in the near future? We'll say in the next few months, um, nothing. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, you know, maybe the best thing that could happen in the next few months is that it does have some kind of bounce and let you out. But I would be probably fairly amazed if this thing ever got back 
above uh, probably 280. I mean, okay. that would be Good nice, nice money here. But certainly, you know, this thing, had, how high was it? I mean, you see this thing. Let's go I back think there was, there was a panic check a couple of years ago. I think $17 or $19 for a day back in the Yeah, seventeen eighty. 1784 on September 9th of 2021, but the one I'm looking back is this March 24th, 2021 at 4480. Oh, and since yeah, since know. then, this I thing's done nothing. That one. Yeah, this one has done nothing but go straight lower. Um, right. Looking at the chart, I don't see a lot. Uh, looking at the uh, area that these guys are in, if they really had some kind of great product, I think their stock price would be better than it is now, but uh, everybody is in this uh, sector, uh, IBM, Microsoft, uh, Oracle, uh, everybody's getting in quantum encryption and all that. You've got to have a fairly good product. Um, there are some companies I think are much better in this space uh, in this uh, kind of uh, small cap area, but this one would just, just looking at, I, I don't have any inside knowledge on them, but uh, they don't look... Uh, just looking at the balance sheet real quick, I, they don't look good to me. Right. Well, I'm glad I called, David. I appreciate your time and your insight. You're not in it right now, right? No, I was gonna. I was gonna buy some today. I I, I trade the futures mainly, and I just yeah. I like these low micro cap stocks. I like to just buy them. I usually focus on the biotechs, and I just set my orders. And, and, and a bull, when they spike. I got and lucky. A bull, uh, I think was it two or three times. Um, I, I caught two or three spikes in this, I forget. And I just was looking uh, at a few stocks that have been hammered, and it just came I came across my list. And, uh, you know, very, very low. And I said, well, let me call Dave and uh, David and see what he has to say. I, um, I don't I like, I don't like, I don't like. The revenue or the share price if they really had something that could compete with the big boys. Makes I sense. don't, yeah, I don't like companies that don't have a lot of cash in small cap. I think that's right. a, kind of a, a no-fly zone for me yeah. until we see interest rates hit their high. And then at that point, maybe you turn around. But I need it to play small caps and small dollar stocks. I need a bull market. It's rare to get a lot of money out of one of these uh, in a fair market. Thanks for the call. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you, David. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, Ninja in the den has a question, what's your top three sectors for a short-term long? And I'm going to say that I most of these are medium-term. I don't think there's a big bounce off these lows uh, that isn't going to continue for those same stocks. I think the ones that are going to get ignored are going to get ignored. Again, in a, uh, in a bounce like this, you want somebody with a big uh, business – you don't want generally medium cap, probably the, the smallest thing you want to look at. You want people that have cash, have cash flow, and have a lot of short uh, positions on it. Um, so far, as uh, for what I can see, um, crude, that's probably the number one. Uh, as soon as we get cold weather, uh, natural gas, <laughs> These may be the same sectors to you, but I think they're a little different. Uh, but uh, anyway, natural gas. And uh, then I think you can look at uh, maybe something like cybersecurity. Um, certain parts of the semiconductor business uh, are probably going to do well after they crater here. Um, I just don't see a buy in a lot of the uh, uh, other ones. But, man, when you look at uh, the charts of... Uh, like Micron, let me get this up here. Um, this thing just would just kind of define uh, not being able to go down any lower. Today's close back into the trading range is fairly good. You broke the low with lighter volume. Um, now you've got eh, some stuff out here. Now, is this going to take you back to the moon? No. But I think as we get into next year, uh, the the the, probably the big blight from both AMD and NVIDIA will be over, and then they'll start moving higher. Um, Micron could just slowly continue to go higher before those two come back or others in that same vein. But my guess is that we're going to probably see Micron uh, back up in the 74s. I'm not saying to go out and buy it today. Uh, I'd like to see the close. As we said uh, earlier, 36.36 is kind of the uh, line in the sand in the S&P, probably the best thing to look at of what's going on. And I'm hoping that we get a test of that before uh, today's out, if not tomorrow. Uh, if we can go down and retest 36.36, make that um, a, a low that holds and that we have a little bit more evidence, then I think probably we're on the way back up uh, to a week from tomorrow, probably 3,800, 3,850, maybe something like that on the S&P cash. So we could have a nice move. Uh, the problem is right now it's kind of a coin flip. I need that uh, retest of the uh, low, especially the way things are going. And because we have so much in the way of earnings coming. We didn't have any earnings coming. We didn't have any uh, economic news uh, tomorrow morning. I probably would say, you know, just go ahead and let it rip. But uh, there's enough things to flip on either side of this argument. 
And two, uh, if we are just getting a lot of cash in from the Treasury and artificially pushing the dollar down, uh, are they going to continue to do that tomorrow? I'd like to see a little bit more of a trend. And maybe I give up a little bit of money in the short term, but uh, I'd much rather have those uh, kind of trades setting up. Now, tomorrow, of course, is Friday, so I'll be looking for options expiration plays after we get those earnings in the morning. But uh, I don't think I want to be in a lot of things until I get some kind of at least secondary confirmation of this move. 877-927-6648. Got that, got that. Okay. Okay. Question look at those uh, secondary stocks today, like NVIDIA and AMD. Um, you've got some nice, you know, bullish and uh, engulfing candles. As we said yesterday, we had so many of these stocks that had dojis. And the question was, were these dojis halfway down on the way down, or were they uh, signs of a reversal? Now, we did get slammed down earlier today, but my guess is that these are signs of a uh, reversal. In this case, I think you could get up to one. There's a double gap right about 130 uh, on uh, NVIDIA, uh, and that's not much, especially as many people are short. Uh, if they continue to short, maybe you could get back up to 140. But I think the, the bounces in this are going to be on those folks that stay too late to the short party. On these uh, AMD, you got the same kind of thing. Uh, as we talked of yesterday, you have three doji candles. Now you got a big uh, bullish engulfing. If that holds through the close today, um, you could get a bounce into 66, maybe 67, um, probably 6650. Uh, which is about halfway in this big gap down on volume. That was 163 million shares. Doing 108 today already. So probably not beyond the scope of reason you could get up uh, to that $65 level, especially with a massive amount of folks that uh, continue to short these at every turn. Let's see. What's up here? Uh, did we look at the uh, candles? Let's go ahead and I got a couple of minutes to see JPM. Okay. Got the reversal candle on that one. These are all earnings for tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, just overnight or even pre market, you could see this go to uh, 112 and wa uh, wash out a lot of people if they tend to be short. UNH, which we looked at earlier too. Let's run these. Same thing. Uh, upside is probably 525, 523, something like that. That's the biggest problem. Again, health groups uh, may be uh, uh, out for a while as people come back and use a lot of their health care. Uh, okay, Morgan Stanley. Quick look here. Um. You know, you've got to really like the light volume today going back into a 17 million share low. It didn't quite get to that low of July 14. Um, Energy is about the same on the way up, on the way down. Uh, USB. Now, this one, U.S. Bank Corp. probably has the best chart. You're coming off of, a, of five different gaps right at the level that we hit this morning. And you had a bearish engulfing in the last seven candles. You may get a little bit of a retrace. But uh, when I look at this one, this is probably the best risk reward in that. Maybe more that they're a regional or tend to be more of a regional bank than the others might be interesting. Okay, let's go ahead. I don't have time. We'll get into this when we come back. But um, that's kind of it for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and start thinking about next week when we uh, see Bank of America on Monday, Bank of Bellin on uh, also on Monday, Charles Swab. We'll go through some of these in the last couple of minutes.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get ready to uh, wrap up uh, another excellent episode of the Power Trading Hour, um, well, we tend to just look like we're going to kind of drift up here, uh, 3672. Again, I was hoping that we'd get some kind of pullback and a retest to 3636. Maybe we don't get it. Maybe we just go straight up from here. But uh, certainly the odds are going to be much better if we get some pullback. And, of course, with earnings, uh, who knows how these banks are going to do tomorrow. But maybe that gets us down there and retests on lighter volume. Um that would be, in a bear market, I'm kind of doubly um, cautious on waiting for even stronger signals in the market that normally I would uh, move on in a bull market, if you're talking about being wrong. But that's it. Uh, as we said, uh, we get into next week, uh, Bank of America on Monday, um, Netflix on Tuesday, along with Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Intuitive Surgical, United Airlines, State Street, uh, J.B. Hunt, uh, Interactive Brokers. Wednesday, we look forward to Tesla, IBM, Procter & Gamble, Lamb Research, uh, Kinder Morgan, Abbott Labs, Alcoa, Las Vegas Sands. Um, so they're picking up. Now, next Thursday, we've got AT&T, Snap, uh, Ericsson, Blackstone Group, American Airlines, CSX, Nokia, Crocs. 
Union Pacific, uh, Freeport, Matt Moran. So if uh, any of those uh, are on your uh, sector right now, uh, are on your radar, or you're in something in that same sector, just know that you want to make sure that you keep a close eye on earnings and how they're going to affect your stock uh, if your stock doesn't have earnings at all. But uh, I think everybody's uh, going to look at this as a very ner nervous market, and they're always going to be looking to shoot first and ask questions later. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We will return again tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.